Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Today is the fourth Sunday of Easter, and this is traditionally known as Good Shepherd Sunday. All the lessons, the hymns, the music all reflect the theme, the Lord as shepherd in the Old Testament. The shepherd refers to that God is king, and when we listen to the Old Testament lesson today from Ezekiel, we'll hear that the kings of Israel are meant to be shepherds for the shepherd. They're to be princes. And so Ezekiel has to deliver the hard word that it is because of the bad shepherds that Israel has gone into exile because of the bad shepherds that Judah is going into exile. So today we think on that and try to translate that into the American experience, but remembering always that the Lord is our shepherd. There is one service note. Um, this occasionally happens. Uh, we get rolling along, and um, the hymn of the day in your bulletin is the same as the entrance hymn, but the hymn number is correct, so you're going to have to turn in your books, uh, your green books, to hymn 456 at the hymn of the day after the sermon. We'll be singing, The King of Love My Shepherd Is. Let us rise for the confession of sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained servant of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you make possible the return of those who stray by revealing your true and only light. May all who profess the name of Christ reject all other lords and follow him as the people of his pasture. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the word of God. (laughs) 
The first lesson is from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 34. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep, and I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the ravines, and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture, and on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. The word of the Lord. The second lesson is from the first letter of John, chapter 3. This is how we have come to know love. Jesus laid down his life for us, and we also should lay down our lives for our brothers. Whoever has worldly wealth and sees his brother in need but closes his heart against him, how can God's love remain in him? Dear children, let us love not only with word or with our tongue, but also in action and truth. This is how we know that we are of the truth and how we will set our hearts at rest in his presence. If our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God. We also receive from him whatever we ask because we keep his commands and do what is pleasing in his sight. This then is his command, that we believe in the name of his son Jesus Christ and that we love one another just as he commanded us. The one who keeps his commands remains in God and God in him. This is how we know that he remains in us. We know it from the spirit whom he has given to us. The word of the Lord. Shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Lord, let the words of the Holy Gospel be on my mind, be on my lips, and dwell on my heart that I may really proclaim it. Our Lord says, I am the Good Shepherd. 
the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired man who is not a shepherd does not own the sheep. He sees the wolf coming, leaves the sheep, and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the sheep and scatters them. Because he works for money, he does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I also have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. Then there will be one flock and one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life so that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have the authority to lay it down and I have the authority to take it up again. This is the commission I received from my Father, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated, turning to page 15 in the back of your bulletins, continuing on in Luther's small catechism with the section on daily prayers. This is the table prayer, how to ask a blessing. So how the head of the family should teach his household to offer a blessing. Reading together, the children and members of the household shall go to the table reverently, fold their hands and say, the eyes of all look to you, O Lord, and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. Psalm 145, 15 to 16. Then shall be said the Lord's Prayer and the following. Lord God, Heavenly Father, bless us and these your gifts, which we receive from your bountiful goodness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In our household we say it holding hands and then we say, Gesegnet to Malzeit, blessed be our mealtime. The text for the sermon is the Old Testament reading from Ezekiel. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God names bad shepherds. We learn from reading 1 Samuel that God is king. God is the shepherd of his people. When Israel insisted they wanted to have an earthly king like their neighbors, the prophet Samuel warned them that having kings would be their undoing. For all too often kings and leaders of every sort let that go to their heads. We also learn from reading 1 Samuel that good kings think of themselves as princes. They know that God is the true king. Good kings lead the people of God in keeping the Sinai Covenant. Good kings shepherd their people with their eyes on the shepherd king. Now this is extremely difficult to translate into the American experience where we do not have a theocracy such as God's people were intended to have in the promised land. For this is not the promised land. America is not the new Israel. Our presidents are not chosen by God. Our presidents are chosen by people. Our presidents may invoke God as all of them do at one time or another, but often the God that they invoke is not the biblical God, but rather a God that conforms to their own political vision. And this is why the psalmist reminds us often in Psalm 146 to do not put your trust in princes. Why? We live in a death-denying itchy-eared, narcissistic culture, all wrapped up in itself. Frequently, it casts justice as comeuppance for those who do not share my worldview. As with bad theology and bad Bible reading, it goes wrong because it begins with the autonomous self, with me in charge, who in turn creates its own God who shares my commitments. Such a God fawns over me and will destroy my enemies. 
On the other hand, the one true God declares that every one of us has an old Adam or an old Eve, which is that old sinner inside each person, Luther says, the heart curved in upon itself. We are born dead in our trespasses, says St. Paul, and left to ourselves, we will die in our trespasses. So you put a whole gaggle of old sinners together and you have a world of hurt. God's justice is not then selectively focused on my enemies. Rather, justice is getting what you deserve, which is never good news for us sinners. And all of us are sinners. Justice is not good news, no matter how often people say the gospel of justice and peace, which incidentally came out of the liberation theology of the Roman Catholic Church in South America, the Medellin Conference in 1968, just saying. So through Ezekiel, God names the bad shepherds as the kings who were all about themselves, growing fat and strong at the expense of the people. For us, it is not hard to think of all those who benefited from the COVID pandemic. Remember, dear Saint Anthony of Fauci and all the politicians and the pharmaceutical companies and the mega wealthy online merchants, the Amazons and Walmarts and the techie parasites that enabled them and even many bad bishops who marched in lockstep with the politicians and completely shut down churches who kowtowed to their lordship. That was not us. Bad shepherds scatter the flock through fear. Bad shepherds dole out money they don't have. Bad shepherds are undone by their own greed and covetousness. And so it was that first the northern kingdom of Israel was destroyed by Assyria, and then the southern kingdom of Judah was conquered by the Chaldeans, whose capital was Babylon. So judgment fell on God's people because they were led astray by bad shepherds who did not fear, love, and trust God above all else. So God's justice was not good news for Israel and Judah. God's justice was judgment. They got what they asked for. So politicians, beware. Corporate leaders, beware. Bishops, pastors, lay leaders, beware. People of God, beware. Bad shepherds of every, every sort will get what they deserve, and all those who follow them will be scattered and get lost. Jesus is the good shepherd. Now... I'm going to start meddling. This may come as a shock to many, but Jesus really is not a Democrat, and Jesus really is not a Republican. Jesus is not American. This is really shocking. Jesus is not a Lutheran or a non-denominational boyfriend. Jesus is Lord. He is God in a crucified, resurrected, and descended Jewish male body. He was circumcised. Jesus will not be co-opted by the politicians, the bishops, pastors, lay leaders who would remake him into a God that shares my commitments and considers my enemies to be his. He will, as we confess week after week, come again to judge the living and the dead when God's justice will prevail for those who insist on receiving what they deserve. But for the strayed, for the injured, for the weak, Jesus is the good shepherd whose grace and mercy are good news. Remember, grace is getting what we don't deserve, and mercy is not getting what we do deserve. Jesus is good news, is grace and mercy. It is not justice, which is God's judgment. So selective reading of Scripture always begins with me, leads to bad Bible reading, bad theology. So if the lens through which I read scripture is my definition of what it means to be God, then that God will look a lot like me. And that's how folks end up with a socialist Jesus or a capitalist Jesus or a Democrat Jesus or a Republican Jesus, an American Jesus or a global South Jesus. If I start with me, then my Jesus looks a lot like me. And that's not Jesus. 
In my baby boom childhood in the late 1950s and early 60s, I was counting it up last night, there were at least 35 children living on a block with 22 houses. And on summer evenings, we would play games until almost dark. And the big kids would say, let's play hide and seek. And they always made sure one of the little kids was it because they would hide where the little kids couldn't find them. They didn't want to be found. Too many people are still playing that game today. They're scattered, they're lost, they don't know it. In other words, they don't want to be found by the good shepherd because he would claim them. When Jesus claims you, then you are no longer your own. You are no longer in charge. He is. So you see, the fat and the strong are not all the rich and famous. The fat and the strong or those who fancy themselves to be in charge, whether it's on a grand scale or something as intimate as one's own life, whether it's in the White House or the State House or the outhouse. In case you missed it, that's where you go potty if you don't have indoor plumbing. The fat and the strong don't want Jesus to be their good shepherd. They really just want Jesus to stay out of anything important like my daily life. So for the weak, the injured, and scattered, which is all of us born dead in our trespasses, the Lord comes to live the totally obedient life that none of us can live. He comes to die the totally innocent death that none of us can die, that we may be his own. Jesus did not come simply to get my vote or to get my money or anything that we have. He came to rescue, rescue from sin, from death, from evil. He doesn't need anything from us. He wants all of us because apart from him, we are lost and condemned. But baptized into his saving death and glorious resurrection, we are no longer our own. We are his. So his sheep gather strays. If you're older, you likely have children and grandchildren, siblings or friends who are strays. If you're younger, you have plenty you know who are strays. Some claim to be Christians, but watching the feet, they worship other gods day by day. Some claim, I love this one, to be spiritual but not religious, which really means I don't want a good shepherd claiming me as his. And some dabble in God, which means that occasionally a little Jesus is necessary, kind of like getting a booster shot. But it's really work, it's sports, it's money, it's politics, it's pleasure, it's play that they fear, love, and trust. And it's not Jesus. Well, what can we do about that? Well, we say, we pray, pray daily. We invite, we don't nag. And then we watch and we wait for opportunities when the gods they fear, love, and trust fail them, and those gods must fail them because they are no gods. Let your faith be genuine as much as possible, showing that Jesus is your good shepherd. Ask for forgiveness as you are able. Practice forgiveness as you have been forgiven. And when you run into this wall of childish intransigence, a lot of times it's with adult children, that insistence on staying lost, then pray for them and ask your friends to pray for them. And remember that the Lord God let his people of old discover to their own regret what happens when they trusted in bad shepherds, when they did not fear, love, and trust in God above all else? Now, I'm going to say this very briefly. Take note that God is in charge of our congregation's disaffiliation from the ELCA and not the North Carolina Synod. God's in charge. Remember how when Pharaoh did not let God's people go, the Lord God wasn't powerless. Pharaoh thought he was in charge. And so he had to be broken. And everyone born dead in his or her trespasses, which is all of us, 
has to learn that before the one true God, we are all weak and injured and scattered. God knows we need a good shepherd. Everyone needs a good shepherd. The Father has sent his Son to be our good shepherd. Now remember, during his earthly ministry, before he was glorified, meaning before he was crucified, resurrected, ascended, remember the Lord Jesus did not heal all the sick, and he did not restore all the broken, and he did not feed all the hungry, and he did not raise all the dead. His mighty works accompanied his teaching, and it pointed to who he he is, present tense, not was. The good shepherd laid down his life for the sheep. He died for you. He died for me. He died for all that we and all may be his. So when we are his through our baptism into his saving death, into his glorious resurrection, our lives are no longer our own. Remember, Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is now no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. His Father does not need our good works, but our neighbors do. The Holy Spirit then enables our lives to be marked by loving service, not as the neighbor wants, but as the Father wills. We love because he first loved us. We serve because he first served us. We gather strays because that is indeed what God wants his sheep to do. We follow the good shepherd to the table. Here he feeds us with his own true body, his own most precious blood. We follow our shepherd and we show others that he alone gives life, eternal life. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, amen. Please turn to 456 in your green books.
please turn to page five in your bulletins? Page eight. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray with the Lord Jesus Christ for the unity and renewal of his church on earth. For bishops Eaton and Smith, for Francis, Bartholomew, and all bishops, especially those who have gone astray. For all pastors, including Marvin Shedler, Robert Coupler, Peter Hoyer, Michael Bergbauer, Joel Kettner, Carl Voges, and your servant. For our parish deacon, Robert Shivers. For all church workers and musicians. For Stephen ministers, for the people of God, and for all people according to their needs. Father, we thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, crucified for our salvation and raised bodily from the dead so that your Holy Spirit may raise our bodies from the dead to share with all the faithful your eternal life and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray that by your Holy Spirit's work in word and sacraments, we may show this dying world that we are your baptized children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit will, through your Son's saving death, set your church free from this dying world's demonic quest for the power and glory that belongs to you alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray that all our neighbors may be drawn by the witness of our lives to the water of holy baptism and so be made your dear children through your son Jesus' saving death and joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for every life, born and unborn. Guard and protect all pregnant women and their babies. We give you thanks for the birthdays of Butch Rufel, Janet Hall, Jim Morris, Dwight Krim, and Gregory Borstad. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we ask your blessing upon all newlyweds, especially Gabriella Staple and Andrew Sheridan, who were married yesterday in the parish church, and upon husbands and wives, that they may love and serve each other as Christ loves and serves his bride, the church. We give thanks for those celebrating wedding anniversaries, Pastor Marv and Marcy Shedler, Butch and Karen Rufel, Dwight and Jeanette Krim, and Mike and Mandy Harrington. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray healing for Emily Coupler Burke, Fran Shivers Perry, Pastor Bob and Lois Coupler, Lucy Hieronymus, Tina Medlin, Donna Adams, Marty and Frank Felter, Todd and Tracy Darnell, Dennis and Janet Hall, Ed Ludeker, Maggie Hoyer, Erlene Carlisle, Elaine Willow, Sheila Leach, Alexandra Schwartz, Arthur and Barbara Moore, John Tullis, Steve Laughlin, Carol Komeski, George Taft, Sarah Schneider, Albert Rossetti, Howard and Lonnie Boyerman, Eris Moles, Cindy Harms, Wanda Valentino, Scott Howe, Vic Weidman, David Reese Miller, Eileen Curzon. Our shut-ins, all who suffer, the dying and the grieving, especially the Baldwin family at Heidi's death, and the family of Joyce Seebeck Montag, and those whom we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, you see your broken world is weak, wounded, and scattered. Grant us grace joyfully to come to the table to receive the true body and the most precious blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Good Shepherd, knowing that in him we have forgiveness, life, and salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Welcome and good morning. In your pews or chairs, you will find the black folder. Please sign in and pass it down the row. If we don't have your address, we'd love to have it that we may send you an acknowledgement by mail. There's a box that says communing. Please check if you are communing today. We like to have that for our records. Uh, you notice that uh, it's rather um, empty up here <laughs> this, this morning. Um, it, in the church, uh, if there's any sort of pyramid, it's upside down. And the more responsibility you bear, you go lower on the pyramid that's inverted. And at the very bottom is the Lord Jesus holding everything up. And we remember that he, he bears us all up. Uh, Father Peter is again not with us. He's um, caring for his wife. And uh, Deacon Robert is not with us because he's caring for his mother. And uh, his mother had uh, surgery on Monday. So we miss uh, both of them and their leadership. So thank you very much uh, this morning. Harrison and David will be helping to serve uh, the Holy Communion with me. Uh, other announcements, the church picnic is next Sunday at 1230 in the gymnasium. And so uh, please sign up on the easel. Uh, it's a pink uh, sheet near the far end of the commons. Sign up how many people are coming with you and sides or desserts that you will bring. The fellowship team will be providing hamburgers, cheeseburgers, hot dogs. And so uh, please sign up. This is very important with the different services, a good chance to um, interact with people across the services. We're really a congregation of several congregations. Uh, new Disciples classes this coming Saturday the 27th at 9 a.m. It is for those new to the Lutheran Church or new to Christianity. There are no strings attached to attend, but it is part of the process for uh, joining our congregation. Again, we're not pushy about that. Mother's Day is coming up soon in the narthex on the table, the usher's table. You'll see these little yellow forms. We're uh, gathering funds for First Fruits Ministries uh, sponsor a survivor campaign. This is survivors of human trafficking. So you honor or remember great women in your life. Um, we're suggesting $10 per, per each one uh, remembered. And so I have six names on here and I think it's just a really neat thing. Um, and let me just kind of close the loop on the previous uh, giving. Uh, we sent a check for $2,802.40 to Pan de Vida. Thank you so much for uh, your gifts from the Lenten campaign. And so again, this is what we do for Mother's Day, honor our mothers, and what a great way to do that through First Fruits Ministries. Please be generous as you are able. Last but not least, Paul Fai, Pal Fai, uh, great organist, 25 years old from Leipzig, Germany, will be here. Uh, he will be playing in concert, a free concert, no tickets, Sunday, May 5th at 4 p.m. Invite your friends, your family, no tickets, please just come. It will be marvelous. Let us rise. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us greet one another with God's peace.
Let us pray. Gracious Father, it is your glory that you can overcome the wildness of your sheep. When we offer you our gifts, confessing joy for the safety of your fold, show us what profit we can bring you when we no longer stray. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your her hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places. Offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and ever-living God. But chiefly we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of our Lord. For he is the true Passover Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who by his death has destroyed death, and by his rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God, mighty Lord, gracious Father. Endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Through Abraham and Sarah, you promised to bless all nations. You rescued Israel, your chosen people. Through the prophets, you renewed your promise. And at this end of all the ages, you sent your Son, who in words and deeds proclaimed your kingdom and was obedient to your will even to giving his life. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink of this, all of you, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim our Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ is risen, 
Christ will come again. Therefore, gracious Father, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us. And believing the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Sin now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of our Lord and of his resurrection, that we who receive the Lord's true body and most precious blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, grant us thy peace. Behold the Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, happy are we who are called through his suffering. David, the true body of Christ for you. Harrison, the true body of Christ, give me to death for you. In his precious blood shed for you, Harrison. In his precious blood shed for you, David. Satisfy the hungry heart with gift. Find his feet. Come give to us, our sleeping Lord, the bread of life to be. They knew and hear his voice. So when you call your people, Lord, we follow and rejoice. Nor the true body of Christ for you. Any the true body of Christ for you. Brian, the true body of Christ for you. Carry the true body of Christ for you. for you, Rose. Stephen, the true body of Christ for you. Sally, the true body of Christ for you. 
Michael, the true body of Christ, for you. Ron, the true body of Christ, for you. The true body of Christ, for you, Suzanne. Jennifer, the true body of Christ, for you. Callum, this is the true body of Christ, for you. Amen. Patricia, this is the true body of Christ, for you. Linda, this is the true body of Christ, for you. Sherry, this is the true body of Christ for you. Connor, this is the true body of Christ for you. Scott, this is the true body of Christ for you. Rhonda, this is the true body of Christ for you. Nathaniel, this is the true body of Christ for you. Janet, this is the true body of Christ for you. Kathy, this is the true body of Christ for you. This is the true body of Christ for you, Karen. Jim, this is the true body of Christ for you. Stephen, this is the true body of Christ for you. Amen. Maxwell, Lee, the true body of Christ for you. Deanne, the true body of Christ for you. Kyla Jane, may Jesus watch over you and keep you safe in your baptism. Amen. Brent, the true body of Christ for you. Brenna, the true body of Christ for you. Susan, the true body of Christ for you. Samuel, the true body of Christ for you. Beth, this is the true body of Christ for you. Stephen, the true body of Christ for you. Amen. With gift of finest wheat, come give to us, O oh, saving Lord, the bread of life to me. is the true body of Christ, even into death for you. Amen. I'm sorry, Harrison. Here. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you, sir. Let us rise. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his most precious blood strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Good Shepherd from heaven, accept our joy and thanksgiving for the table you have prepared. Sustain us through this blessed food for faith and service till we rest and feast in your eternal home. We bless you now and evermore. Amen. I will strive to pray daily, worship weekly, read the Bible, serve at and beyond St. Matthew's, 
be in relationship to encourage spiritual growth in others and give of my time, talents, and resources. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia.